Good morning. We are going to be finishing up, and this is faith is how to move a mountain. Amen. Faith is how to move a mountain. Look at your, how about you? How many of you, you know, we read that, that text, and it probably sounded like when you first became to Jesus, read that when they, Jesus spoke about, you know, if you had faith to move a mountain. You probably just thought that it was just, you know what, that just sounds impossible. But that is just how much faith we as believers in Jesus Christ have. When you was born, God gave a measure of faith to every individual. Amen? So faith must be released and applied to every situation. That means every situation in your life, you must utilize faith. And I know you may think, you know what, you mean over some of the little small things, well, you know what I found out in life? It's those small things that trip us up. Amen? So unless faith is called upon, it lies dormant in your born-again spirit. Let's get that. Unless faith is called upon, it lies dormant in your born-again. Notice I say born-again spirit. So when you was born, as I stated, God gave you what? A measure of faith. So until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then it's the word of God that will have what? That will build. Amen? So faith must be believed in the heart. Touch your heart. Touch your spiritual heart. You ever hear your spiritual heart? It's down here. Amen? Then spoken with words. That's why words are powerful. The power of life and death are in the what? The tongue, what you speak, comes to pass. The word of God says, call for those things that be not as though they were. Amen. So you what? From the very beginning, you what? The, and Isaiah 53 say you what? Were by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you what? Were healed. So if we will understand that. And if I can get us to understand that we are spirits. We live in a body that has a soul. So you are not sick. You was healed from the very beginning. Satan is putting sickness and disease on you. We will understand that. We understand. So you are already healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, the Bible does, is, is not conflicted. They say by the stripes of Jesus Christ, it did not say you're getting healed. It says you are healed. Amen. Or you were healed. So when you're getting sickness or disease that come upon you, you got to quote that word right back. Say by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I were healed. I am healed. Amen. We're calling for those things that be not as though they were. And then when you speak the words and follow up with what? Action. You got to follow up with action. If I believe um, I was going to do a prophetic, um, a prophetic visual this morning in reference to because God was speaking to me about the mega millionaires. And so if I believe that I am a mega millionaire, then there's some things different that I'll do. Because I believe that I'm a mega millionaire. Mega millionaires don't hang out in the slum. Except they're going to do some, going to give out something to those that are in need. Mega millionaires don't, you know, mega millionaires are not hanging, are not hanging around with ungodly, hanging around the wrong people. Amen? You ain't going to find a mega millionaire besides what well, if you watch the Beverly Hills building, they got them a trailer and got it popped up. Amen? Even when you, never, when you don't have any money, and that's the reason why it's your, why is it that people who hit the lottery and they can lose it or they end up dead in a matter of less than a year or two's time? Because their mentality hasn't changed. So, Let's take that from the world perspective. Their mentality hasn't changed. So here it is. You're, you don't have the million dollars yet, but you're supposed to, what, call, if we act by faith, you believe you call for those things that be not as though they are. Amen. And then you're going to confess it. I'm a mega millionaire. Amen. And then when it says follow up with action, how do mega millionaires act? I'm talking about God mega millionaires. They ain't walking around, if you're a woman, like, child, mm-hmm, uh, you know it, girl, yeah, that's right. 
And then if you're a male, you like, yeah, I got my pants. Yeah, you know, what's up? How you doing? You know, I got all that money like that. Yeah. I don't care if you do have a million dollars. That don't look attractive. Amen. So it's what? So a man thinketh, so is he. Because then, now here it comes. This is the catch. All the while rejecting fear and doubt. Uh oh. Uh oh. All the while rejecting fear and doubt. Well, I say faith must be what? Believed in the heart, then smoking with words, and then follow up with what? Actions. All the while rejecting fear and doubt. You believe in God for a house, you start believing for it. Then at some point, you got to go look at the house. Amen. You got to put some form of action so God can know that you're serious. It's the same thing that we stated about when the, one, the first thing when people say, oh, I'm, I'm going to go to Israel. The first thing come out of my mouth is say, get your passport so God can see your faith. You can't say, I want to go to Israel, and then you don't get a passport. Well, I'm waiting. I'm going to get the money. No, that's what my grandmother called putting a horse, putting a cart before the horse. Amen. So if you didn't even get the passport, God was like, well, I don't see no action behind that. Amen. So same thing if you believe in God, you know, for believe in God for a car. You may be riding around in a raggedy piece of bucket right now, but if you treat that car, if you want a Mercedes Benz, then treat that car as though it was a Mercedes Benz. You don't have chicken legs in there from your children and French fries and all that, letting people smoke in it and all that, keep it all junky. And, amen. I'm preaching real. Listen, I'm telling you, I see, there was things I was doing that I didn't even know what I was a prophet. I had a 1988 Granada, white. No one should be on their telephone in here. Everybody should be looking at me. So if you got a telephone, if it ain't got the word of God, then you should not be on it. I am one, don't, I don't, that's one thing we, everyone in here need to pray about that spirit. Now, if you see it on people, you bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. We're not going to have the prince of the air ruling up in here in the name of Jesus. These young folks can't, young folks and adults that can't have no consecration without being on a, on a chat or something like that. Not in the house of God. We gotta, we're going to do things, what? Jesus class. Another level. Where's the reverence? We're going to have reverence for God. We're going to have the fear of the Lord for the Father. Amen. And see, it may not, and this is why I say this, because y'all see what that, when I, when I feel that that's going on, it shifts me. It's not me. It shifts me. Because the Holy Spirit is, is what? It's, it's what? Fighting against another type of spirit. And so because I'm connected and, I'm, and I got Jesus standing here, if you will see, if we will understand that, when you look at me, do not look at me as prophet as Adrian Blackstock. If you are going to look at me, look at me and see a prophet of God. And then after that, you should look and say, see, I see this is Jesus standing here. So if, since Jesus is standing here, how would you act? And if you can't act the, the way you think that Jesus is standing here in front of a man or woman of God, stop praying to him because you ain't getting nothing. You can't reverence him. Amen? Glory be to God. I'm just sitting, I'm speaking to the forces of darkness. I really ain't talking to nobody in this room. Because <laughs> some of you don't have an issue with that. You know what the references of the Lord is. What it says, the fear of the Lord is what? Wisdom. When you fear God, you already know. You just took the check mark. I got wisdom. I fear Lord. That's the reason why I got wisdom. You don't, you don't, that, you don't have to work up for it. I know you fear God. So you have wisdom, end of discussion. I know you fear God. You have wisdom, end of discussion. End of discussion. We ain't got to try to conjure it up or anything like that. What? That was a promise that God had a condition with it. You fear God, there goes wisdom. Amen? Believe you in God. What was I, I just, Lord been speaking through um, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 20. What? About trusting what? Trusting God what? And it said there's two pieces there. When you believe it, say believe in God. Let's pull it up. We've been praying for two, three days now. Amen. We're still talking about faith. 
Second Chronicles, Second um, Chronicles twenty and twenty. And while you're turning, what well, all the while rejecting what fear and doubt. If you don't believe the word of God, you're not going to be able to get anywhere. If you don't believe the word of God that I'm speaking coming out of my mouth, you're not going to go far. Amen? Glory be to God. I'm talking about what? You want to have faith, what? To move mountains. So some of these little things uh, that's basic one-on-one religion, we got to grow up in. If I come to the house of God, David says, I, I was glad when they said unto me, let us enter into the house of the Lord. You have it? Use your big voice and speak up. Yes. To kill, yeah. Stop right there. When we believe in the Lord that God, what's going to happen? You should be established. So you probably think, well, how is this text going here? What did I just say? Faith must believe in the heart. So when you hear the word of God, it, first of all, you, it's what? Coming from God, and you got to believe it immediately where? In the heart. Then what the next verse say? Keep reading, daughter. Um, uh, God, uh, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Okay. Believe his prophets and what? So shall you what? Prosper. If there's a prophet, you're not supposed to, if, if you really got a, a connected with a prophet, you ain't going to be broke. Most people don't even know that. They don't even know that that's one of the reasons God used prophets outside of coming against the, the forces of darkness. It is to what? We have an anointing on our life that has released the blessing to the people. So that's why if we just do with what the word of God says, and that's not just me. When you went other, um, other night, we went to go see a prophet. He was from New York that was in. And I can, and, and, and Mr. Margo said, she said, I thought, he said, that man could have been your brother. Because everything, the stuff that he was stating, and a little bit more sharper, because he, he had to deal with New Yorkers. You know, I be telling y'all, y'all Midwesterns be crying. Us people that come from New York and, and what have you, the little stuff that people say, he don't move us. He don't move us. So Minister Mark was saying, man, I thought he could have been your brother. Why? Because what? We're not just proud here about prophesying houses and cars. Which I, he was saying to say, when you hear a prophet is standing among you, you're supposed to be ready to snatch that word. If that belongs, snatch it out of the air. That belongs to me. Snatch it out of the air. You got to what? Take it. And what did we learn? I believe what? By faith. What is that thing? I believe. I want that. You did what? See, y'all don't see how this lining back up? It says what? I take it. When you hear the word of God go out in the atmosphere, you still got to what? Take it. Amen. If you don't take it, like right now, I'm going to say this is probably going to be a messed up sentence, but I'm doing it for a purpose. The spirit of the, spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord of God says you're going to get a house, you're going to get a car, you're going to get a dog, and you're going to get a cat. Now, okay, now, okay, I said four things in there, right? Who? I mean, if I ask probably one of the children in the room, who would like to have a cat or a dog? Okay, see, there was, there was two people in there. But who would, who would like to have a house? And then who would like to have a car? So you see, you, at, even though that's how it goes on a Sunday morning, the word of God is going forth, you take that which that you need. Several people in the room say, I don't want no dog, I don't want no cat but I'll take the house in the car. Then take it. Come on, are y'all following with me? Are you following with me? Do you, do you see? You, are you tracking with me? Are you tracking with me? That's the way it works. You, take, you have to take it. What's yours? There's a 45-minute sermon, and maybe everything ain't going to, and you take what you need. Amen? And if it's something you need to be corrected in, if the shoe fit, wear it. Boy, if it ain't your shoe, don't put it on. Amen. Hallelujah. 
we, we make this thing hard. We be sitting there, people be sitting there wrestling with spirit. I wonder if they're talking to me. Take what's yours. What's not yours, leave it. Mind your own business. Amen. Don't be sitting there thinking, well, I know I think that word can be for someone, so. Take what's yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So y'all see that. So, we got that foundation um, established. I'm feeling, act- y'all don't even know. I feel there's unnecessary activity outside this room. Tell Pastor Adam that. I, I feel that. Now, let Pastor Adam that. I feel there's unnec- you said, unnecessary activity outside of this room. I can't help it if, if my gift is like this. <laughs> People don't understand that. I just told you that Jesus is standing here. He's what? I'm not omnipresent. He is. My anointing carries a realm, not just a place. It carries a realm. And that's what, as you get, you, when you get your faith raised up, you won't just have faith for just your house. You'll have faith not just for your city. You will have faith outside of your city, outside of your state, what? And God moves to the nations. Hallelujah. See, we're trying to move. I'm trying to get us for this big thinking this individual. I'm talking about that's why now here's what God's trying to do. It says faith is how to what? Move a mountain. Think of a mountain. I know if my son was up here, put, uh, put, you get me a mountain up on the screen? To move a mountain. I want to I wanna break your religiosity. Break it. Destroy it in the name of Jesus. That's what type of you Look at your neighbor and say, I have faith to move mountains. Now you're probably saying, man, how I'm going to, how I'm going to be able to do that? I'm going to show you something in the natural. But that mountain is, what is it that you're dealing with in your life that seems like a mountain? Come on. Now I'm, I'm, make, now I'm breaking it practical. I'm taking a Bible. I'm peeling it open. Amen. Okay, here, here's somebody say, so most people look, and, and listen, natural, really, most people think that finances is like a mountain. Okay? It is, it's really, that's one of the areas in the, in the body, body of Christ that, that is like that. Most people think, when it comes to the area of finance, that's why most people say they stay broke till they get to heaven. But God is saying, if you have faith, to move what? Mountains. So give me something else that get some sickness sometimes in the lives of individuals feels like what? A mountain. I've been believing God for this sickness and it feels what? Like a mountain. But God is saying, you have faith. What's going to get the sickness to move? Faith. What's going to change your finances? Faith. What's going to help your marriage? So now we're making it practical. So whatever the mountain is, Faith is going to be able to move. It don't matter what it is. You believe it for a child like it ain't happening. Faith. Amen. I got um, Deaconess Care. I didn't ask for you. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, I want to make sure. I, want, I don't want to get in rebuke and think, you know, that he wouldn't say, Pastor, get past out of me. I'm like, nah, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm working, on, I'm working on too much. I got too much seed in the ground. Hallelujah. Go ahead, daughter. Okay, so this is just the example that I thought about. Um, because when we went to Georgia, right, and you need finances. And so um, we have one income. Praise God. Thank you that he keeps us. He keeps us. And I was on the side of the bed, and everybody had left the room. And I was talking to God because I sold for increase. And I kept saying, God, I sold for increase. I sold so I can sow. But... I mean, nobody knew my internal conversation with God. And so everybody left the room. Um, Deacon Gary and my husband was in our room. And I sat beside the bed, and I felt emotions rise. And I knew it because of what you've been teaching and, and, and the, the description that they gave with the emotions. I felt my emotions rise because I was concerned about the finances for the trip. And I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm going to be out of the Babylonian system because I'm not going to be having debt. So I was like, God, I need finances so that we don't have to, you know, 
put stuff on the credit card. Well, I, I, you know, and you, your emotions kind of rise, but it wasn't time for that. It was time to have faith and it was time to believe God, period. And point blank, no, no ifs and buts about it. And so I said, I'm not going to be emotional. God, I thank you that you're going to pay off this debt so I don't have to put it on this credit card. And that was it. I got up and I walked away. Well, by the time I got out and um, was sitting at the table talking to Angela Smith, and then all of a sudden, Dean Gary said, oh, I want to bless you and your husband. And he said, I'm going to pay for our room. I'm like, oh, glory, I receive it, Jesus. Because it was just, you know, if I would have let my emotions get in the way and not believe God, I don't know how that situation would have went because God said he is not going to give you people because they need. Up. Everybody You're needs. Messing. Your prayer over there down in the room was touching over here. And that's what people don't understand, the angels and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit over here in you yes. was connecting to, for God to use Deacon Gary over here. But if you would have gotten to what, let's so go good. back to what it says right here. Faith must believe in the heart. You got to get in what? Spoken with the words and follow up with what? Actions. Action. You got the emotion. And then it says, and all around rejecting what? Fear yeah. and doubt. Then it don't even stop yeah. there because the, um, the partners couldn't go. They had extra money yeah. and they sold. And so it paid for our meals. Yeah. Yeah. So then that was extra on top. That was extra on top of that. We yeah. just got to believe God. Amen. Amen. God will do the rest and, and, and get the blessing taken care of. That was something none of us was asking for. Amen. Pa- uh, or what happened. So when Pastor Adams said he got a text from the partners and they had extra money and they wanted yeah. to, to sow. And I'm like, um, okay, uh, you know, all right. And it came in what? Yeah. It, 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 it came to pass. That was yeah. God. We just got to believe. Yeah. Amen. Even though they didn't get to go, but they what? They, they sold. So what? That we and it be blessed blessed. a yes. whole other individuals. Believe God. Yes. It, I'm going to give you this. Um, and, uh, can I say another yes. piece to it? And so the other piece is not always thinking that it's coming your way. It, the way you think it's going to come, but how God thinks it's going to come. Because I remember standing near your kitchen saying, I need a bullet. And, and I remember touching my car. I mean, those little tickets that they handed out. And I said, God, I thank you that this is a winning ticket. In my mind, I wanted the $100 lay. That's what I wanted, period. But God supplied more than what I needed because he gave me a want. Then he came over and he took care of my need. And then he get, took care of another need because I didn't have to put any more money on a credit card to go to the restaurant because through the partons. There were so many things that I saw right there because God orchestrated it. And it wasn't the way that I thought it should come. It was the way he wanted to take care of it. Isn't that worth staying on the love line? It's, it's um, deaconess. Okay, this Deaconess over there. We should have another mic around here somewhere. And mom, what I love about God and how he do things. See, the currency of heaven is faith and trusting in him. So therefore, when you know that that currency is faith, and now this time, like when me and you were talking, and you remember I said, you know, it's no time about playing with these little small prayers about, oh, lay me down to sleep, Lord. We have to truly pray and access the heavens up there because we give the heavens permission to release the blessings from the heavens down to earth. So I was just saying, I was telling mom, I was like, dang, mom, I said, a lot of people don't realize that when you pray and you truly believe in trust, that's the currency. It's not, oh, you know, Lord, let me figure it out myself. Heck no, trust in him because I, anytime I try to figure out something, I mess up something. I'm tired of messing up stuff. So that's why I throw my prayers up to God, and I see those currency releasing down to heaven, and that's what we should do. We give heaven permission. It's in your heavenly bank account. This scene, tithes and offering seems foolishness to the world. But we live in the kingdom. I don't live in the world. Amen. I was so glad that when Apostle got that story with this Pastor Adam and I, was so glad when he says that it's tithes and offering. We, we will try. I mean, we ain't fried no chickens up in here. We ain't keep no fish. It's been what? Tithes and offering. I don't care if you only make $100 a month. I'm, st- I'm going to tell you, give God his tithes and offering. I don't care if you make $10,000 a month. Give God his tithes and offering. That is the way it's supposed to be done in the kingdom. Why? Because it goes into your heavenly bank account. Amen. And when you need it, amen, God released it to come down. It seems like foolishness. Mm-hmm. But he says, I take the foolish things of the world to conform the wise. 
Pass that. He's going to use his pastor car. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a talk with a, a, a pastor of a large church in town. Oh, and, yes. And that, that, that conversation was, was back and forth. And we were talking about the, we were really talking about the, the things of Israel and, and the Jewishness of Jesus. But we got to talking about tithes and offering. I don't know how we got there, but then we got there. And my testimony to him was, um, you see uh, how God has done it through the years that Glory by Fellowship has been tithes and offering, so much so that I believe, and I, I'm, I'm fairly accurate, I haven't seen the roles here recently, but I'm between 95 and 100% tithers, Amen. right? As a, as a pastor, that uh, uh, says I'm a lot up. for what we teach in number one, but number two, you guys, the believers at Glory by Fellowship International Church. Because uh, it allows us to, to, to do more, have more at the church than other churches uh, this size or smaller. Or in his case, he was telling me it's the exact opposite, right? I mean, he's down 20, 30 percent tithers, right? And he's trying to run a big ministry here in town. And, and he was like, he said, man, if I could only get to where you at. And I'm, you know, and you could, you, a lot of times we think in the opposite, right? If we can only get to where he's at, but no, that's not what God, that's not where God, uh, that's not God wants us. God wants us where we're at, where uh, we're at a, a, a status of where we're at. Amen? Amen. I want to go back to the scripture in Second Chronicles 20. That is how I, I got to, to Israel. It says, believe in the Lord your God. I believe in the Lord my God. So shall you be established. Believe in the prophet. So shall you prosper. My trip to Israel was dead free because of the word of God, first of all, me believing in God and the God that's worked inside of her. My Israel ticket gave me the free mileage to go to Atlanta. So I paid $11.21 my tax for the ticket. I got a chance to live with a stay with prophetess, Adam, prophetess and pastor. I went there, I did like Kiara. I was believing for my trip to be dead free. I laid on the ticket. Everybody else got some of me, but did I give up? I said, nope, I'm next. I'm next. They called me. My ticket, guess what I got? I got a $100 ring with $1 bill. My room was $147, so I only had $40, $41 left. Another man saw me and said, I love the way you came up there. I'm going to sell you $20. He gave me $20. So my room was $27.51. <laughs> Why? Because I believed in the word God the prophet and I'm attacked. And I said, wherever she go to get seats. So I'm challenging everybody in here. Take Second Chronicles 20 and 20. All of us should go to Georgia next year. All you got to do is, if you believe God and God's in her and you attach to her and every time outside, inside, another one, if you give a prophet a glass of water, we used to be knocking each other down to try to give her a glass of water. So shall you prosper. Okay. I literally take those words. Okay, let, let's speak prophetically. Okay, that is true with the glass of water. You're right, motive. But that where water means also increase. That means also monetarily. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. So for people who they, you know, don't, maybe somebody just may come in and they may, you know where they come from? Because people think fixing water is something so trivial or what have you. But here it is that God puts it in there if you give a proper glass of water in the natural, which is a glass of water, or a spiritual monetary, you receive a proper reward. No one, no one has even can exegese that. And I, you have no idea what that is. Amen. All I just know is that even when I had, uh, listen, I caught on to this with the prophet that was from, you know, I, the father kept telling me, give him the water. I said, well, he's like, you don't need this water. So... Me and myself, I'm trying to stay in the word, and I've got the water because he wasn't. And here's the thing. So God was pressing me in that, too, because I kept wanting to put the water down. But I had to, he kept saying, get, I tell you, get, get the water. And the very moment, I, when finally, I was there, stood there. I, kept, I had the water, and he turned around, and he wanted the water. But just because I am one that in a certain way, because I am served, I still have to still be obedient to other opportunities to serve. He never seen me a day in life. I never seen him a day in my life. But it was important that I was there in that service because they confirmed, because people who did not know him maybe out of this realm, what God was saying to me, I would get it first. He'll say something I already have, and I confirmed it. He'll say, God, give me a word. And that's the way the gift's supposed to work. 
Amen. Let's get back to, um, here's the other thing with that incident. That what, what Pastor Adam and I, now we didn't win not one thing. But you know what my prayer was? My prayer was to let our people be blessed. And that's not just was in that environment because they was given something. It was because that is what we want for this house. I want you to go farther than me. I want you to go past me because my destiny is my destiny. Amen? And so it was a blessing for us because you know what everybody was talking about? You know what all the other people that was there? It was over 500 people they were talking about? How, man, glory about fellowship came in here and racked up. <laughs> but you know what? Pastor Adam was about one of the only, out of all the fellowship, was the ones that brung his leaders. Because what? We listen, we follow, um, a, we love accountability. Apostle challenges and say, bring your people. So, Normally, they don't ever, this is the first thing, nobody ever, he never invites anybody to bring other leads outside of us. And Pastor Adam did the clamoring call, and what? He probably didn't think he was going to bring, they would say, who, who are you? Monica came down, and Monica wants something. He was like, who are you? He said, Monica looked at him and said, I am Pastor Adam from Glory by Fresh. I'm Pastor Adam's sister. And he was like, oh, why? So he started catching on, wait a minute, all these people over here from GBFIC. <laughs> so we want you to have not, not just our faith, but we try to get you to understand you can have faith, what? To move mountains. Okay, right now, Pastor Adam and I are going to be, and a lot of us are main, main intercessors. And, and, let, and let me tell you this, God is going to test this house. Because don't think the enemy knows that Prophet Agent Blackstock is going to be on the other side of the country. But I want you to say, I want you to trick him and say, boo, y'all, you was fooled. Because I still got a remnant here. Why? You should have light. It's what it is. It like faith, amen, amen. That, that that's here. Hallelujah. It's no different. What one sin flight to a thousand, but four sin flight to one million, amen. So the city, all those that live in Grandview, Grandview should be on lockdown. All those that live in Lee Summit, Lee Summit should be on lockdown. All those that live in Independence, Kansas City, South Kansas City, lockdown because of the believers here at Glory Bible Fellowship International Church. Hallelujah. I'm just looking for some powerful testimonies when I get back. Amen. Just as long as y'all don't blow up nothing now. Don't blow up nothing. <laughs> Amen. I know I got some Peters in the house. Don't blow up nothing. Don't, wait till I get back. Listen, wait till I get back because I won't be a part of the action. <laughs> Listen, it says when you put a demand on faith, you must continue to believe and speak that calls patience. You got to believe it. You take it right now. I, I just did a demonstration with some of you guys. Can, I am a mega millionaire in the name of Jesus. You got to confess that. You got to believe it. You can't be looking at where I come. I can't be saying, well, I came from the Poke Bean Projects. Uh, I don't have no money in my bank account. I am a, the woman of God, the prophet of God, and y'all know God gave that to me years ago. And we keep sitting to come forth and keep able to come forth. You are what? A mega millionaire. In the name of Jesus. And then you got to confess it out of your mouth. And then it says, the lady with the issue of blood believed Jesus could heal. She said she would be healed if she touched the garment. Then she touched the what? The prayer shawl in the name of Jesus. Here's another activity of faith. Be, write this down. Be ye according to your faith. I'm telling you how we understand this because people understand. Be it ye according to your faith. What does that mean, prophetess? If I believe that if Prophetess Adrian or Pastor Adam lay hands on me, I'm going to get my healing. If I believe that I'm going to confess the word of God, then I'm going to get my healing. If I believe that I take, if I got to take this medication, then I'm going to get my healing. You see? It's still what? Be ye according to your faith. If you put more faith in your doctor than you do King Jesus, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Amen. But I got faith in King Jesus. Now, I believe in the doctors. Amen. But I believe that Jesus is a healer. Yeah. I confess out of my mouth all the time. Divine what? Health. When I'm taking, I, t I shared this with Deacon Harry. When I'm taking my bear just stall and I'm taking my Siaga, I even use my Siaga to take communion. Amen. Amen. I say divine health. I say Lachayim. I say divine health in the name of Jesus. Lachayim. Divine health. It means uh, to, to life and health. Yeah. Okay. So, say to, I, so I do it from the Jewish side and in the natural. Amen. 
So is there any wonder what? That I walk in what? Divine health. What am I confessing? Divine health. I'm, so what? Call forth those things that be not as though they are. Then it says Jesus said, said her faith has made her what? Whole. Did he say, did, did it say Jesus made her whole? He says her faith has made her whole. Her faith has made him uh, 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 going to the 2020 Olympics. The faith has made you that great businessman. Your faith has made you that great father. Your faith. Your faith has made you that woman of God. That faith has made you that Proverbs 31 woman in the name of Jesus. See, I'm just giving away this morning. I was just thinking about this. I get up and I have this. And I was putting on, I was, you know, I put on my, uh, on my stuff. I want to look at myself, but I said, I, I am covered in the beauty of holiness. Amen. I want to say I'm covered in Mary Kay. I'm covered in, in Mac or what have I. I almost wear that stuff. I put all I put is lotion on my face, and I get in the mirror, and I say, I'm covered in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. It's more, it's, if, if women of God will get more concerned about what your insides look like, hallelujah, then it will come out on the outside. Let me, and I'm, I'm just going to say, let me just be transparent. Let me just be transparent. There's one thing I never had an issue with is getting a man. man. Let, let me, I'm going somewhere with this. I ain't never had no big butt, but any man that I wanted, I was ever to get him. Come on. Because it was something about my character and it's something about the way that was in me. Yep. Amen. Yep. Hallelujah yep. to the Lamb yep. of God. Because see, some of y'all, these women think you got to have a big butt and all this. That's why you get confused and messed up. And you wonder why the ugly woman walking in the mall with that good looking man. Because there's something that she got that she knows how to please a man rather than a big butt and a smile. Amen. Preach, mom. Hallelujah. Pastor Adam done had some, had done had plenty of women. He come from New York. I'm quite sure. Huh? But you know what? Who got him? I did. Hallelujah. From the Poke Bean Projects of Miami, Florida. A black girl from the hood. Glory be to God. And didn't have no big butt. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm sorry. I just got cut loose. I just think maybe I just want to help some single women out Come in a room and help some single man out. Yeah. You better stop looking. Because I'm going to tell you, like Smith Wiggleworth said, I don't know why I'm going this way. Smith Wiggleworth said, when all the women lay down anyway, it's all, they all got the same thing. Ooh, come on. Hey. <laughs> so instead of you looking at what's on the outside, you better get you a woman that when you get yeah. sick and when you get yeah. down and when yeah. you're in your emotion, yeah. you want a woman that can be able to reach heaven in the name of Jesus. She may not be perfect. Hallelujah. She may not look perfect. Hallelujah. You better shut. You better get you a woman that know how to reach heaven. Glory be to God. And you women, you better look for, start looking for a man and speak the same, the same ones I need to hear. Start looking for a man with a six pack and all of that. You better look for your man that when you need your behind to be right, that man gonna still be right there in the name of Jesus. When you go through your trials and your tribulation, that man gonna still be right there. Yes, yes, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen, hallelujah. This superficial stuff in the name of Jesus. And if they can't do that, listen, I'm like, listen, I've been, I've, I've been, I can do bad all by myself. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes. When I met this man, this man had, was making $7 an hour, but I still, there was something, but he still was, he was still a good father to his daughter with that $7 an hour job. In the name of Jesus. I didn't have to look for him. Matter of fact, I was trying to push him away. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let me talk about faith. But let me tell you why I got him and he got a Jewish lineage. Because my grandmother would try to get me to clean up and do stuff. I was always more want to be in my books. I would tell her all the time. I would say, I'm going to marry me a Jew. Yep. What did my, so my, I didn't know okay. nothing about the Bible. But because I spoke it, spoke it out of the in the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And when I came home one day. I say, Mama, his grandmother's name is Weisberg. She says he's a Jew. She said, remember what you used to walk around and tell me when you want to get out of doing work? <laughs> the word of God, so little one, it, that's why little one, oh, I had this vision. Tw- um, little ones, everybody, t- up to 21, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, up, 21 and under, 21 and under, you can talk. Where's Adam? He Hiante. How about 
The father was saying this. No, they can say where they at. The father was saying this. Confess this out of your mouth. In the name, say, I shall, I shall live a celibate life. I shall, I shall not be with a man with a man or a woman with a woman. God has called me to the opposite sex of me in Jesus' name. Now, how about we started our children confessing that, amen, so that they won't be trying to get connected with this homosexual spirit. Amen. Because they're going to bring it. They bring it to your school. They try to bring it in the books and tell them. But as a prophet of God, I don't care. Hear me, children. Hear me. I don't care what they say in the books. You be bold enough to say that no. And I don't care because they got parents that are lesbians and homosexuals. You tell them, though God says that it should be man with woman. Man with woman. Not man with man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not woman with woman. Yes. Do y'all hear me, children? Hallelujah. We're not going to have that spirit attack. That is, a, that is an antichrist spirit that has come and been released upon the nation. Let me help you write this down. The, who, in the, before even the turn of Jesus Christ comes back, the antichrist, read the book of Revelation, was going to be set up. The Antichrist will be an individual, a man that has no relations with a woman. Track with me. So therefore, to, to get his agenda to come forth, he, was, he is already propagating it through the homosexual agenda. Because they're ignorant, and that's the reason why we as the church we don't hate the people. We hate the sin because they don't know that they're going to hell because Satan is using them because he's making them a part of his army. Do y'all follow me? Because only one third of the angels got kicked out of heaven. So Satan knows he cannot win the battle. The only way that he thinks he's going to be able to win is what? Is use what? The, the men or women of God. So if I can get everyone to be homosexual, so then when the Antichrist comes on the scene and he says, hey, I'm getting ready to take over, then all the homosexuals are going to be like, okay, we're going to follow him. But many of them are going to realize at that point that they've been fooled. They've been tricked. Because it's going to be too late. And that is the reason why we, as the real church of God, we must preach the pure, unadulterated word of God. I don't care if they're in your family. I got them in my family member. If they're a family member, what have you. I love you, but I'm going to let you know. So when God run the videotape back on me, pookie, willy, boo-boo, silly, Sally, what have you, you was told that if you do not change and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will spend eternity in hell. Now, I just gave you some little bit more to put with that to tell them why. Because you're fighting the Antichrist spirit and he's a homosexual. He's going to be a homosexual. Amen. So it says, Jesus believed the miracle of healing came. Then she felt in her body she believed. And then what? It took place. What are you believing God for? What is the mountain? Remember, let's go back. How the mountain, how to move a mountain. What is the mountain you're believing for? What is that mountain we talked about? Is it the finances? Is it your marriage? Is it your health? Is it your children? That mountain, you have enough faith, God says, to move it out of the way. And we go, you do that by what? Believing in your heart, speaking it with words, and then follow it up with an action. That action may look different from every from different individuals in here. If you, if for instance, Adam want to be one of the greatest track stars, he cannot say, "I'm going to practice one day a week." That's no action in there. He can be, he can believe it all day long, but if he don't put no actions behind it, and then if he don't speak it out and believe it, Amen. Even when he have a bad, 
But even when he have a bad day, he need to still get up. I don't care if, if and even Kentwana, if he jumped and he messed up, he need to still get up when he done fell and say, I am still the greatest of all times. We think because when we fail, when we fail or we miss or we mess the mark or something like that, that we think that it's over. You got to still get up and say, I am the greatest of all times. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you what? And, uh, and that, because it says, well, all the while rejecting fear and doubt. Say, I rebuke fear. I rebuke, fear. I rebuke doubt. I rebuke doubt. In the name of Jesus. It says, Jesus' power and anointing healed her, but his power was not initiated until she put action to her belief and words by touching his clothes. Be it ye according to your faith. However you believe God to do it, if that's the way you want to believe for it, it's going to come that way. Amen? You believe God's word in your heart, you say it with your mouth, and then you what? Do it. If you want to wear these Nikes around here, just tell my just do it. I think the next time you look down at your Nikes, that you get a visual. God says, what you doing? What you doing? Just do it. What you believe in God for? I can just do it. I love that song by Tasha Card. I've been going around with my belly for months. He said, Jesus did it. Oh, yes, he did. What, what, what kind of song that would have been and say, Jesus did it. I don't know if he could. Jesus did it. You didn't say, oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. And then it said, God needs your faith before his power can do anything. My God. Stand to your feet. God needs your faith before his power can do anything. Say that to your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Find you somebody and look them eyeball to eyeball and decree to them. God needs your faith before his power can do anything. You want your financial change? Raise your faith. You want your healing? Raise your faith. You want your deliverance? Raise your faith. You want your children to say, raise your faith. Hallelujah. God's word cannot fail when it is believed, spoken, and act upon. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let the weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Come on, look at that. I'm going to close out with this.